What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode of YNR, um, this was an intense <laughs> episode to say the least. Um, as far as Kyle and Lola go, I really have no feelings towards this wedding that they're planning and stuff. I mean, I'm happy for them or whatever. I just, you know, I don't have any feelings towards it. Like, I could kind of care less about it. Even though I'm pretty sure that they're going to go through with the wedding, but I wish Kyle wouldn't have made Lola that promise. Because you know that how she feel about her father and stuff like that, how he disappointed her and, you know, basically ran out on the family all those years ago and it was hard for her to forgive him. And then he wrote her that letter and stuff and, you know, got her all emotional. But, you know, I think she, she still doesn't want him at the wedding. For obvious reasons. And I respect her decision on it. I respect it. Um, I think at some point she may regret that. Because I know how bad she wants her mother at the wedding. But not to have her dad at the wedding. I think she might come to regret it. At some point. Not anytime soon maybe. But at some point I think she might. You know. This is your big day. And I understand you know her dad ran out on her. And he has no right to be a part of it. But. I mean, if he's trying to make amends, why not hear him out? You know, clearly her dad has regrets and he's trying to make it right. But, you know, he reached out and, you know, now it's in Lola's court and she has to do what she has to do. I just really wish Kyle didn't make her that promise. Like, I'm going to be honest, I just wish that Kyle did not make her that promise, telling her that he'll never disappoint her, he'll never hurt her. Don't make that promise. That's a promise that you cannot keep. Never make that promise. Never. I hate when people make, I'm going to be honest, I hate when people make that promise because it's a promise you're not going to keep. You don't know what the future holds. You don't know what you might say later, what you might do later. Never make that promise because that's the qu quickest way to break that promise is you, you doing something stupid or saying something dumb later. Because plenty of people have made that promise before and they've never kept it. Oh, I'll never disappoint you like this person. I'll never hurt you. I'll, don't do that. Don't do that. Because then right after you say that, maybe not now, maybe a little later down the road, but the other shoe is going to drop. Don't make that promise. I'm a big firm believer in that. Never make a promise that you cannot keep. Don't do that. Because all you're going to do when you do that is do what you said you weren't going to do, which is disappoint. That's all you're going to do. So don't don't make that promise. At the end of the day, people are human. Kyle's human. Everybody's human. So just be the best you that you can be, but don't make promises like that. Because you're going to set yourself up for failure when you do it. Don't do that. Especially when Kyle know good and well he's keeping a secret from Lola about that New York mess. So he know, like, that was stupid of him to even make that promise. That was just dumb. Ultra dumb. But um, anyway, moving on from that. It was great to see Eileen Davison. I love Eileen. Great to see Ashley Abbott. Um, I, I wish Ashley was moving back to Genoa City, but I could understand why she wants to stay in Paris. I can understand why Eileen Davidson don't want to come back, you know, at this particular stage in her life, you know, where her kids, you know, getting older, getting ready to go to college. You know, she just doesn't want to miss anything. You know what I mean? And not that she was really kind of missing anything, but the commute to from her house to the studio was like two hours, she said, back and forth. So I could kind of understand that why she don't want to do it. But it just sucks that she's not around full time because I think, you know, it'd be great to have Ashley back full time. But I am happy that her and Jack finally squashed this beef between them and they're merging the two companies, Jabot and Abbott Exchange. Um, and I understand why Ashley would be concerned about Abby doing business with um, Phyllis. But I want to I want to say I think Abby this time around may know what she's doing on this you know what i'm saying like by having the majority ownership of the hotel plus she's making sure phyllis puts in some money so that way if this is a financial failure at least phyllis will lose some money too you know what i'm saying but abby can afford to lose this money you know with 500 million dollars in the bank you can afford to lose plus she got other investments anyway so this isn't going to bankrupt her um so i believe ash abby definitely knows what she's doing on this one you know um 
So they're trying to come up with all these ideas and stuff about what to name the new company, you know, because Jabot and Abbott Exchange, like I said, they're merging. And the whole time I'm thinking, I'm like, why are they trying to come up with new names? I agree with Kyle. What's wrong with keeping it Jabot? You know what I mean? Like, it makes more sense. I mean, why change the name of a company that's been around for 60 years? Jabot has been around for almost 60 years, you know, over 50 years that company has been around. And it's a worldwide brand. It's a recognizable brand. Why change it now? You know, confusing people. Might as well keep it at Jabot and keep it keep it in the family. Keep it like that. Um, see, this is why I like the Abbott family more as opposed to the Newmans. Because the Abbots have their drama, but they are more forgiving than the Newmans. You know, when it comes to forgiveness and stuff like that. Because look at all the drama they've been through in the past year. You know, the past couple years. And they've all, you know, done things to hurt each other, but they've rebound it forgave each other and are back working with each other see that's what i like to see um you know just them coming together and stuff like john always wanted them to do work together i mean like any family you're gonna have your problems you're gonna have your issues but they know how to work it out more you know what i mean like they're gonna be mad at each other for a few months maybe but they find a way to forgive you know without anything dramatic happening to make them you know sorry about it later even though it has happened before but still they're just bigger on forgiveness. Um, I totally understand where Abby is coming from as far as like her relationship status with Nate. I get it. You know, I feel bad for Nate, you know, because Nate obviously really wants to get to know Abby and he really likes Abby. And, you know, he's willing to, you know, stick it out and wait until she comes to terms and see what she want to do relationship wise. But I totally get where Abby's coming from because she's had a bunch of bad relationships over the years. And she always goes from zero to all in when it comes to relationships. She just kind of just wants to focus on fun and business. Can't fault her for that. I can't fault her for that. You know, right now she just wants to play it safe and have fun and focus on her money. I can't knock it. I can't knock that. And I'm glad that she was honest with him about it. I mean, she's basically been honest from day one about that when he pursued her. She told him flat out she was taking a break from men. You know, I think she's willing to casually date Nate, but I don't think she wants to jump into anything serious right now, like engagements or moving in. And, you know, she just doesn't want to do that. She just wants to play it safe and see where it go. You know, if they want to get serious, then they'll get serious. If not, they'll keep it how it is. Keep it light. And I think that's the best way to go at this point. Um, so anyway, Devon might want to keep his eye on Nate and Elena. I'm just saying. Um I can see Nate and Elena getting close because of them working together and stuff like that. And they have they they have the medical field in common. So I could definitely kind of see that happening. But I do believe that she really genuinely wants to be with Devon and stuff like that. But, you know, you don't want Nate getting too comfortable now, even though he he's, you know, trying to get it popping with Abby. But still, you never know what can happen in the future. Feelings might change and you, you just never know. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but you just, you know, keep your eyes open. Um, I'm happy for Elena, you know, that she's decided to go into the general surgery um, residency. I'm happy for her. You know, she's on the path to becoming a doctor. And, you know, I think it'd be great. I definitely think it'd be great because she worked hard for it, you know, went to school. You know, medical school ain't no joke. And I'm happy that she's getting this opportunity and stuff, you know, and Nate is going to guide her. He's going to help her. Um, it'd be cool to see another doctor on the show, you know, be dope. I'm happy for her. Happy for her and Devon. I like her and Devon together. Now, I heard that Michelle Morgan supposedly signed a three year contract. I don't even know if that's confirmed, like because I don't think the show confirmed it and I don't think the actress confirmed it. I just heard that it was rumor at this point. I don't know if they confirmed it or not yet. I don't know. Um, but I heard it was supposed to be a three year deal. Um, they I, I think they could find a way to bring her back from the dead and stuff. I think they could find a way, hopefully, because I don't want to see her come back as no new character. And then her and Devon got to start all over and she's somebody new. I prefer her to just come back as Hillary, you know, because I, I love the Hillary character. She was that spice. You know what I'm saying? Because Devon has this laid back personality and she's more total opposite of laid back. You know, she's just a bobblehead. She's bouncing all over the walls and she's just a firecracker. 
and she was so polar opposite of Devon, I feel like that's what made them click. You know, because I read message boards and people say Devon's character is boring and I don't really find him boring. I think that they can do more with him. It's just the fact that they probably choose not to for whatever reason. But I do like him in business storylines because I find him to be even more interesting when he's in business mode. But when he was with Hillary, I think Devon's character was at his best when he was with Hillary. I definitely think so. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. I did like the conversation that Devon had with Adam because Devon gave it to Adam from a real perspective. Like he was trying to be realistic with Adam. I felt bad for Adam because everything Adam told Devon was true. He had a scheduled visitation with with Christian and Victoria lied to him on purpose and said that Christian was sick. But then she later took him to the park with the other kids. So that way Nick could have some time with him. See, that was low down. And that's what irritates me about Nick and Victoria, because they're doing exactly what they always accuse Adam of doing. Playing dirty tricks, manipulating, and they're doing exactly what they accuse him of doing. That's why I always say they're hypocritical and they're no better than Adam. You know, yeah, Adam plays dirty tricks sometimes, but he's been up and up when it comes to his visitation with Christian. He's been on the up and up, minus the whole telling him that he's his real father. But he had every right to tell him, in my opinion. You know, he had every right. But I do agree with Devon about custody battles. I definitely agree with him about that. Like, I feel like custody battles really do hurt the child in the long run. You know, like everybody keeps saying they got the kid's best interests at heart. But you don't understand the toll that it takes on a kid when you got two parents fighting over you and stuff like that. It takes a toll on you. Look at what it's doing to Christian. He had to move out of the only home that he's known and move into Victoria's someplace he hasn't stayed you know what I mean like obviously Victoria is no stranger to him but still you know he had to uproot his life you know and this is what custody battles do so I totally understood where Devon was coming from um but at the end of the day I feel like if Adam tried to do the whole joint custody thing and try to work something out with Nick I feel like it wouldn't it wouldn't work and I think large in large part, I think it wouldn't work because of Nick. Nick doesn't want to make it work. He, do, he doesn't want to compromise. He wants Christian all to himself. He just wants Adam to play the uncle role. And I don't think Adam's comfortable with that. Adam wants his son to know who he is and that he is his father. That's what Adam wants. And I can't say that I blame Adam for that. You know, and that's what this is all about. He wants his kids. He wants to raise them the way that he wasn't. I don't blame him. And of course, now he got a restraining order put out on him. And at first he thought it was Nick, but then he realized there's no way Nick had the power to do that. So, of course, Victor, we all know Victor interfered. And this is what I was fearful of. I said it in my previous video, Victor should have stayed out of it because now everything I predicted is coming true. That's why he should have stayed out of it. Um, so anyway, it was it was funny seeing Jack roam in the halls of Newman Enterprises and stuff like that, trying to check on Victor, because as much as Jack and Victor have hated each other over the years, I do feel like they've always had a mutual respect for each other because they were allies at one point, you know, so I feel like there's a mutual respect. And this is in and, and the whole conversation that Jack had with Victor about Adam. This is why, you know, I'm a big fan of both. I'm a big fan of Jack. I'm a big fan of Victor. But on this, in this case, I got to lean towards being more of a fan of Jack at this point right now because this is what I love about the Abbots. It's that forgiveness. You know what I mean? It's, it's forgiveness, you know? And Jack was trying to tell Victor, throw Adam a lifeline, you know, give him another chance. Victor just refuses to do it because in Victor's mind... He feels like, oh, if I give Adam another chance, I'm not going to choose Adam over my family, over the rest of my family. But that's not what you would be doing, though. The problem is, if he embraces Adam, Victoria and Nick are going to assume that he's choosing Adam over them. But my thing is, why does it have to be him choosing any side? He's not choosing. He doesn't have to choose a side. All of them are his children. Adam is just as much a Newman as the rest of them. He has, you know, like Adam has 
the same blood coursing through his veins as Victoria and Nick. He deserves to have his father embrace him as as his you know son. You know what I mean? So I don't see why Victor keeps thinking, oh, if I if I embrace Adam and give him another chance, that means I'm choosing him over the rest of my family. No, it's not. He's your son. He's just as much a part of that family as the rest of your kids. Just as much. The problem is Victor raised some entitled children. That's the problem. That's the issue. And, and God knows Nick and Victoria are entitled. What I do enjoy is the fact that Abby manages to stay out of this mess. Like her and Adam, I feel like with Adam and, and, and Abby's relationship, it's not as contentious as his relationship with Nick and Victoria. Because Abby stays in her lane. You know, she doesn't really cross paths with Adam. And I think she, on some level, I think she feels like her and Adam are in the same boat. Because Nick and Victoria are as tight as thieves. Because they got the same mother, same father. And I feel like that's why they're not as tight with Adam and Abby because they got the same dad, but not the same moms, you know, so they don't feel like they're full blooded Newmans like the rest of them. That's that's just my assumption. That's what I think, because trust me, Victoria treats Abby like dirt. Nick is a little bit better with Abby than Victoria is. Um But it was just crazy, like Victor just refuses to see reason. And that conversation that he had, and it's so crazy because Victor was like, he he feels like Adam is not in the same league as Kyle or Victoria, Abby, and Nick. That's just how Victor feels. And I feel like that's a spit in the face. That is a spit in the face. And I love the showdown that Victor had with Adam. Because what happened in that office is exactly what I predicted would happen. If Victor got involved, the Victor was totally harsh with Adam, the way that he told Adam that he wished that he never found him and brought him back to Genoa City, how he wants Adam to leave town for good. And then he basically threatened Adam and told him that if he stayed in town, he would regret it. Like now you're threatening your own son. Ridiculous, ridiculous. And I love how Adam didn't back down. I love it. Adam told him, he was like, no, my kids are here and I'm going to get them back. See, this is what I was afraid was going to happen. And this is why I said in my previous video, this is why I said Victor should stay out of the custody battle. By him interfering and putting that restraining order out on Adam, I knew Adam was going to want to um, get revenge. I knew it. I knew Adam was going to want to get revenge. And that's exactly what Adam plans on doing. Because he told Victor straight up. Basically, he declared war on Victor and told him. He was like, you ain't seen nothing yet. He said, I'm going to take my kids and I'm going to take your company. He said, I'm going to take everything from you. And he basically told him. He said, Victor, Victoria, Nick, they're going to end up with nothing by the time he done. See, this is what I was afraid was going to happen. I was afraid this was going to happen and Victor interfered. And boom, it happened. What Victor needs to realize is. Adam is just as devious as he is. He's just as cold-blooded and dark as Victor is. Hence, hence why his name is Victor Adam Newman Jr. Because he's just as bad as Victor when it comes down to it. Just as bad as Victor. Like, it was just sickening to watch Victor sit there and condemn his own son. Like, yeah, Adam has his faults. Adam is not perfect. But I don't blame Adam, though. And he stuck it to Victor today when he told Victor... I'm not going to abandon my kids. I'm not going to let my son be raised by somebody else like you did to me. See, Adam has so much resentment towards Victor because of that. And he always will be. Adam is not perfect. Adam has done some hurtful things to people, despicable things. But he's not the devil that everybody tries to make him out to be. Adam really only attacks people that attacks him. He doesn't always go on the defense all the time or the offense, so to speak. He doesn't always do that. You know, like I said, he's not a perfect person. Adam can be devilish, of course. He could be slime. But when it comes to the Newmans, they just are so entitled that they always attack first when it comes to Adam. They go after him a lot of times first. And I'm telling you, a wounded Adam is a more dangerous Adam.
So Victor got it coming and Victor's vulnerable right now with that disease he got and the treatments he's taking. He's vulnerable right now. I don't know if he got the strength to take on Adam and God knows Nick and Victoria can't take on Adam. They couldn't even find their shoelaces when it comes when trust me, when it comes to going up against Adam, they're no match. They would definitely need Victor because they're no match when it's just them. Not at all. But anyway, I enjoyed this episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about today's episode. I will see you all later. Have a great day. Peace.